going to start uh, with a sheet of paper. Uh, it doesn't have to be green. I just went with green uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and I'm going to draw Mango since my book stars these two alligators, Mango and Brash. Uh, so I'll start with Mango. And I always start with the heads of the gators usually. Um, and I usually draw the, the snout shape um, as kind of just, that's my starting point. So Mango, you know, has a very rectangular snout, but with a curve on one end. And then I draw their eyes, or actually their like eyebrows. So there's Mango's eyebrows. Uh, and then I draw his nostrils, which are basically the same shape, only smaller. Um, and often I'll draw details as I go along, like the the nostrils. I guess these are actually his nose and these are the nostrils um, and his eyeballs. Um, and, you know, with the head, the head kind of determines the scale of the rest of the alligator. Um, so I move on to his body, and his body is a parallelogram. Um, so it is basically a rectangle, but almost like in perspective. So it looks, it's like a, a very, very tall triangle, but chop off the top for where his head goes. Um, so that's his body shape, which is pretty easy enough. And legs legs are supposed to be about the same um, length height of his torso. Um, I always draw like a line to indicate the feet of the gator. Um, here's the feet. Uh, his legs actually might be a little bit longer than than I go for, um, but that's basically body and legs, uh, arms. Now the arm that is kind of you know nearest to us because the bodies are sort of at a little bit of an angle. Um, the arm that is nearest to us always seems to line up with the side of his or so. Um, so the arms are often just like slightly curved, very, very, very thin triangles with three little triangles for fingers, uh, which most of the time they will have, the gators will have three fingers on each hand. Though, as you can see on the cover, uh, they have, they also have thumbs sometimes when the thumb is visible, though a lot of times they will just look like this arm where it's just three. Uh, and their feet almost always, I think definitely always, I think it would be weird if their feet had a fourth toe that was like a thumb. Um, so their feet have three uh, toes, just like their hands most of the time. Um, so then I draw the, the tail and their tails, depending on whether or not they're moving or in eating motion or whatever, um, the tails can sometimes be kind of short or kind of long. It kind of changes, uh, but their tails also are slightly visible between their legs when their legs are kind of far enough apart. Um, now the other the other hand, let's do something interesting with this other hand. So this other hand, the the gators don't always have sort of discernible elbows. Like on the cover here you can see, you know, Brash has an elbow. But a lot of times their arms are just kind of noodles of a sort. Uh, and they go out like that. And actually we can give him we can give this hand a thumb to make it interesting. He's reaching for something or explaining something. Okay, so this is mostly 
finished at this point. Uh, then I go in and I do details like the vest. Um, you know, sometimes they can be naked, but usually they are in vests. So the vest, you know, the top part comes to a V, more or less. It's a little off center from the body to kind of give it the illusion that it is slightly angled. Um, and then it's a V on top and then a W on the bottom. And there we go. There's the vest. And most of the time they will have two buttons. Each of the gators uh, will have two buttons. It depends on whatever disguise they might be in, but their default uh, brownish vests have two buttons. And then they have belly stripes. So they don't fit the fill the entire torso. Um, and they're never really centered properly. Um, but there's one line to show where their sort of like belly stripes will end because they have these stripes. And usually you'll see about two or three stripes at the bottom and then two or three at the top so it's like two lines for one two three stripes one two three stripes um i don't really always count their stripes it is just a uh you know whatever whatever seems to fit or look right at the time um and this torso here is maybe hanging off from his body a little bit more than usual um so now the usually the, the last details that i add are their ridges that go along their the back of their necks and their tail. So they both have a total of four ridges on the back of their heads, and then however many fit on their uh, tail sections like that. Oh, and of course, Mango needs an expression. Mango is usually pretty happy. Uh, most of the time. So he's usually smiling. Um, whether or not teeth are showing is up to uh, whoever the artist is. Um, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes they, they don't necessarily need eyebrows, but I can give Mango eyebrows. I might make him look a little more exciting. The eyebrows my characters uh, very often do not attach to their heads and that is basically how you draw mango um, because he is an investigator he might have a gadget sticking out of his vest and so I am making little arms for a gadget I'm not sure what his gadget should be um, perhaps it is a let's see what is a good spy gadget that he could have oh I know what, what I might give him uh, I'm going to give him a chocolate chip cookie because I kind of like to have a cookie right now. Um, and chocolate chip cookies, as you know, are very useful in um, spy crime investigations uh, because uh, they are good snacks and they fight off hunger. And, you know, it's very important that spies don't be hungry on the job. And also because invariably if mango is caught um, eating a cookie on the job he will make a mess and that'll be how the cookie crumbles or some other silly joke that I would be bound to make uh, so that's how you draw mango um, and I suppose I could ink the character um, you know this is usually my pencils aren't aren't always this this tight uh, and I'm usually drawing smaller uh, 
the inking isn't necessarily needed. I am probably going to mess up while doing this. I don't usually draw ink with a giant Sharpie. And usually I'm doing my best to not have my giant head covering your view. But usually when I draw, my face is like two inches away from the paper. Um, that's just, that's just how I draw. Uh, but this is a big enough, big enough image that I think I can do it without shoving my face uh, on top of it. I'm screwing up the thickness of his uh, gadget arms, uh, but so be it. Okay, and this little detail on this gadget is gonna get lost, but here's the the cookie. It's a little wobbly. It's not a perfect circle because perfect circle cookies are unnatural. There we go. That seems like a lot of enough chips. And his nostrils. His nostrils usually aren't filled in um, black. They're usually filled in with a darker green for the gators. But I am drawing with this really fat sharpie. Okay, actually it's not really fat sharpie. There are fatter sharpies, but this one is, um, you know, not thin. Okay, I also, usually when I draw, I spin my paper around instead of rotating my wrist, I will spin, you know, I'll spin the paper all the way around uh, to draw things at specific angles, but I'm trying to make this easy to view so i am distorting my my arm there's his thumb there's his fingers the legs now the legs like you can see when I penciled, I feel like had these lines. I even did that one a little closer. Usually on the legs, the end closest to the, the, his backside doesn't go all the way up to his torso. Like it cuts a, just a little bit short, um, unless his legs at like a weird angle, just to indicate that the you know, legs and the tail and the body are all attached. Like even this line here usually does not go all the way to where the arm is. So that you can see it's still part of his tail. Uh, there we go. And the tail ridges. Oh, I forgot to ink those. And then the feet. And so on his feet, usually uh, there's, I put a tiny little line, slightly curved line uh, right there where his, you know, ankles bend um, just to kind of give it a little depth. And there's, that's, there's Mango. Now to draw a brash, brash, is pretty much, you know, the bodies of the two alligators are fairly identical other than their uh, colors. Uh, but Brash's head, Brash's head is easier to do. I'm just gonna draw Brash's head down here. Um, his head is a rectangle minus the curve. So his head is actually kind of easier to do in some ways because sometimes getting that curve to look the same every single time um, is, well, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but um, it can, you know, it's harder than just making two parallel lines. Uh, and usually I don't even concentrate that hard at making it identical. So here's Brash's head and his nostrils 
and his neck ridges. And I'm gonna make him popping out of the sewer because they are alligators after all. So here is the sewer and his arms. Let's actually his have his arms. He's uh, got his hands poking out of the sewer here. Maybe that's, there's his other arm there. So there's his arms, here's his vest, and they'll make one button visible. And he needs his belly ridges there. And he needs an expression. Um, now, Brash is often kind of, it's not that he's grumpy, he's just very, very uh, serious minded. He's very um, uh, focused on the mission, the business. So I'm going to give him some serious eyebrows there. And he is going to be upset at Mango for some reason. Uh, there we go. There's his mouth. And we're going to just ink him real quick. Let's see if I can get his snout looking properly. Ah, he's, you know, that, that, um, forehead. I, I mean, these are the eyebrows. Those are, I guess, his forehead. There's the mouth. Teeth. Fill it in. Neck ridges. Sorry, my hand is kind of in the way there. Hands. There we go. The sewer. Put that in. His vest. That arm. Maybe let's um, turn this into a little scene. So what if we had some little crumbs here and Mango can be saying, look Brash, I found a clue. Maybe he, maybe the cookie was not in his vest, but he picked it up with his vest. Yes. See, I knew what I was doing all along. Whoops. Okay. Draw the balloon here. Like that. And then Brash is saying, uh, I said, follow the breadcrumbs not cookie crumbs.
There we go. That makes perfect sense. Whoop. There we go. Okay. And there's a uh, drawing of Mango and Brash. And of course, you know, the pencil lines could be erased. And remember to sign your work. Very important for all artists to do that. There you go. Mango and Brash from Investigators. And how about I show you how to draw their arch nemesis. Uh, if you haven't read the book yet, uh, I mean, this could be a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not that big of a spoiler because um, it's you're bound to learn about it soon anyway. Um, their arch nemesis, so it's back to pencil, is a crocodile who fell into a vat of radioactive saltine dough and it turned him into a giant saltine cracker and he calls himself Cracker Dial. So Cracker Dial is mostly a cracker. Uh, so I start with like a square shape for his body because his body is a giant cracker. Uh, and then I move to his head. And because he's a crocodile, his, his head shape is very similar to the alligators in a way. Actually, I think in, in real life, the biggest difference between crocodiles and alligators is their head shape. Um, but with this, their head shapes are have a lot of similarities. Um, so he has a snout. You know, just like the other two gators. And he has eye, forehead, eye, I mean, they're not really eyebrows. They're a brow, but they're not the eyebrows. He does have eyebrows, but, but he also, he has his neck, like the back of his neck is thicker. So it curves out. <coughs> Excuse me. It curves out from his eye sockets um so there's his snout here is his little little eyeballs and pupils there and he has uh there's his his body he's kind of standing at an angle he has thick kind of thick legs thicker than uh than the investigators do so he has these thick legs, but because he is a cracker, um, his biggest weakness is essentially water because he doesn't want to get soggy. So he wears these big galoshes on his feet. Um, you know, they're pretty enormous galoshes. I just remember as a kid when it would be a rainy day and I had to wear galoshes and they were just enormous. So that's kind of my, my memory of, of galoshes. And so Cracker Dial, since he's a cracker, he's basically kind of flat. Um, he... Uh, he might be a one-dimensional villain, but he is two-dimensional in terms of thickness. Uh, so, uh, so he has his, he's, all his like limbs and stuff and his body are flat. So basically what I do to create that illusion is I draw just an extra line around one side or one edge to give the illusion that he is flat and he has just a tiny bit of depth. And his head is often not centered. Um, that is not always intentional. And his arms, his arms are kind of like his legs. They're, they're kind of, kind of thick compared to 
Mango and Brash. And similar to the issue with the galoshes, he doesn't want to get his hands wet. I don't know why he wears a, just wears a rain jacket all the time. Um, you know, that'd probably make more sense, but I don't know, maybe he just likes to show off his uh, crackery body. Uh, oh, and so he wears these, he wears these dish gloves, basically, his rubber, rubber gloves. And he's always shaking his fists. He's always angry about something. So he's often um, shaking his fists at things. So uh, I hope I, my head is not in the way there. Um, so we usually see his thumbs uh, because he has these uh, gloves on. There we go. And he does have a tail, which usually just sticks out behind him like that. It has a little swoopy sort of shape. And his tail, his tail does not have ridges in its crackery form, but it does have depth. So it is, uh, has that second line there. Uh, and now I need to add a little detail. So I'm gonna give him a mouth. As I said, he's always angry about something. So there, he's, he's gritting his teeth. Sometimes, sometimes you can see a little bit of chin sort of there. Uh, I'll give him some angry eyebrows. There we go. And the cracker, like a like a real saltine cracker, has these kind of uh, what do you call this crimped a crimped edge? I guess I never I never really count these so often. There'll be one on a corner that is awkward, awkwardly different size than the rest, and it has the little the little holes, the little puncture holes uh, that uh, sounds too close to his chin uh, that saltines have, and there are six, seven, eight. You know, it's that that pattern, that traditional cracker pattern. Uh, so there's cracker dial. Um, maybe I won't bother inking him because I am sure to mess it up with this fat marker. Um, but there's, there's Cracker Dial, the, the arch nemesis of the Gators. I will, here, I'll sign my name because I, I said that it's important that artists sign their names. There we go. And... They are the stars of the, of the book again, Mango and Brash. Oh, I should, I should have, I said follow the breadcrumbs, not cookie crumbs, comma, mango. This way, both of them are saying each other's name. That looks terrible now, but you get the point.